There are two aspects to it. First of all, a country cannot evolve and prosper without the participation of the private sector. Because the government takes care of the population, takes care of the governance of the country, can actually run some public business, but a quantity of businesses are actually private. And if you want, the biggest source of employment actually comes from private sector. So that's why it's so important that the private sector gets involved in the SDGs, so that while running their business, they actually make sure that they contribute to the achievement of the SDGs, whether it is from a perspective of equality, a perspective of social coverage, a perspective of a, 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 um, a responsible production uh, of goods, of protection of the environment, and so on and so forth. So that's very important. Now, what is their motivation? I must say, I believe that when somebody starts a business, as uh, we have discussed uh, with them actually within some conferences, it is with the objective of first sustain oneself and sustain uh, a family, like somebody needs a job. But it goes beyond that because businesses should be actually a contribution to the society and to development and not exclusively a means to making money. And that's why one of the uh, components that we have brought into the discussion with the private sector is the issue of business with ethics. That is to say that businesses actually have some obligations. First, they have the obligations related to the law. You know, they have to pay decent salary and they have to provide a social coverage for their employees because otherwise it, is, it would be tantamount to exploitation. And of course, this is not acceptable. Secondly, businesses have to be transparent. There should be no uh, embezzlement of money or mishandling of money. And so therefore, there should be transparency. And at the same time, businesses should contribute to the government while paying their taxes. You know, and that's why tax evasion and frauds that we see in some businesses is actually counterproductive to development. You know, because it's stealing away the resources that the government needs in order to be able to carry out its, uh, its activity. And thirdly, I think that there should be a component in everything we do at all levels, whether we work in public sector or whether we work in, in, uh, in private sector, um, which is that we are not alone on the planet. You know, we, are, we live in a community, we live in a society, we live in a world. So therefore, whatever I do will impact you. And therefore, if we have that, that, uh, that spirit and this in mind, it means that whatever we'll do will always be sustainable and positive. It was a good step, let's say, when corporate social responsibility was, uh, was implemented, that was a very good step because it was a way to make business aware that they are not in isolation with their company or their business, that they are within a community and therefore they have to think about the impact they have on this community. The SDG go mu much beyond because the SDG actually are not only for private sector, it's for the entire society, first of all. Secondly, the SDGs are, are very holistic in the sense that they look at the functioning of the world from many perspectives and, and they, they ensure that whatever we do, we have a base of rights, of human rights, mutual respects, and that whatever is achieved benefits everybody. So actually, the way corporate social responsibility has been implemented over these last decades when it has been uh, created is, is more like charity. That is to say, companies, in order to show that they were not only there to take benefits, were kind of helping communities with building a school or, or doing uh, some support to an activity. But it was more like charity. And the definition of charity is that charity is a one of the nation. I have money. I do something with that and that's it. Whereas what we want to promote through the SDGs is the logic that has been actually developed by Mohamed Yunus, uh, the, the Bangladeshi Nobel Peace Prize, that is social business. That is to say a business that contributes to the community through its product and with the benefits reinvest to keep the business going. So that the logic of business is not only to make money, but it's to have money to be able to do the business. And the business should be a business that brings something to the society. 
So that's why the SDG go must be young, because the SDGs raise the conscience that first of all, you can have a very flourishing business in a, in a community where people are starving, where people have no social security, where people are discriminated against, where while doing your business, you contaminate the water or, you know, or, or the environment. So I must say, the SDGs actually bring the conscience that all components of what you do have an impact and that therefore, while running your business, you have to make sure that you take into consideration all these elements. You see, the MDGs were actually focusing on the, on the very basic for human survival and or for human, let's say, the basic of dignity that you have to have access to health, to education uh, and not be hungry. But the SDGs actually are a vision that is holistic and as I say, it's not only the responsibility of the government, it is the responsibility of businesses, it is the responsibility of the citizens. Everybody has a take in that and should be able to go forward with uh, the constitution of an activity and, uh, and some exercise that will help everybody. Social business really goes with the logic that the dividends, the benefits of the business, go for the benefits of everybody and therefore are reinvested to, to make the business go. This is what we say, the idea of not working to make money, but making money to be able that we can continue to work, knowing that this work will contribute to the community. Because at the end of the day, whether you, you uh, build cars, you uh, have a factory for shoes, you are an agriculture and you have food, whatever the, the activities you have should contribute for, to the community. So social business is a business that does not seek the, um, uh, the wealth or the enrichment of only one person or only one group of person. It has to benefit to everybody. And you see, nowadays, we live in a world where more or less everybody dreams of making money. And people have lost the sense that a dream should be something else. 20, 30 years ago, when you were asking young people, what do you dream of? People would say, I dream of becoming a doctor, or I dream of being a firefighter, or I dream of being an agriculture, or I dream of being a teacher. Nowadays, when you ask people all over the world, not only in Nepal, what do you dream of? They say, I want to make money. Because the values have been changed because of the, the way the society has evolved over the last two decades, where money has become an end in itself. But money should never be an end in itself. Money is a means to achieving an end. So that's why it's important for people to have money in order to have a good life. But the objective cannot be to have money. Because actually, when you ask the following question to these young people who tell you, I want to have money, and when you ask them what for, then they don't know because they have no dreams. So somewhat social business bring back, bring back these values of we are one within a society. What I do impacts you and impacts somebody else. And I think that social business and SDGs bring back that notion that we don't live in isolation of the other ones in a very selfish manner only to have money. But we live in a world where we need to consider that whatever I do impacts you and the others and therefore I will try to have a positive impact through my actions, through my business and so on and so forth. So I think this is where the, the big difference is. You see, I think that the SDGs also aim at rebalancing the world because in today's world, what you see is that you have these eight persons, eight men in the world who have the wealth equivalent to half the world population. So eight persons, imagine, have the wealth of 3.6 billion individuals in the world. How can it be? And this has happened only over these last two decades, where a philosophy of free market, ultra -liber liberalism were really the mantra of the day. And I think the SDGs bring back that. Within the SDG, you have the objective number 10 that talks about equality. And that talks about the fact that 
we have to regulate markets in a way that we don't speculate on everything, that we don't consider that everything is the source of making profit. The logic of making profit, as I say, has, been, has lost its, its virtue. It's not bad to make profit, provided the profit you make, you use them in a positive way. If you use your profit only for yourself to be rich, and you, as I say, you have a happy life surrounded by people who starve, this doesn't make sense. So somewhat I think the SDGs are bringing back that conscience that we are, actually, the world is only like one country at the end of the day. We are one. And we see it, for instance, in terms of environment. If I pollute in my country, it impacts my neighbor. If I don't have a good health system and many epidemics are happening in my country, they will pass over to the other country. So everything has an impact. So the SDGs, as I say, bring back some values of solidarity, prosperity for all, of putting people at the center and considering that the planet is important because this is our home, all of us, and we share the same. And if you spoil the planet around you, you spoil my planet at the same time. So I think that's the big difference. I think the role of the UN is at different level. There is one level that is the policy level. UN is above all um, um, an environment where knowledge is being uh, produced and, and I would say organized. So we can bring to Nepal a number of experiences from other countries within the region or far away where they have tackled the problems that Nepal knows, problem of poverty, problem of um, lack of development, uh, problem of inequality, and so on and so forth. We can bring, bring this example. And that's the, the, the beauty of the UN, is that we have at our hands so many good experiences that the country in which we work can benefit. At the same time, so that's very important because these policies really help organize the country. The government has to also take proper measure to guarantee that there is a legal environment that is protecting uh, the, uh, the business. That is to say, if I come and I invest my money in creating a business with number of employments, I want the state to ensure me that this business is not going to be attacked or, or I would say, or taken away from me because of a lack of a legal environment. So this is also where UN can help. We can help as well in helping the businesses see in which way they can implement the SDGs. And there are many ways, once again, there are many experiences. So we can help them look at issues of inclusion, of parity, you know, helping them think clearly the impact on the environment. So the UN has, has a big role to play. And the UN has a role to play vis-à-vis -vis the population as well, you see, whereby we can also help the population understand their responsibility their rights so that they too become an element of, I would say, a social uh, pressure that is necessary. It exists in all countries. I would say a population that is empowered, that knows uh, what, what are the right, their rights, is a population that will contribute uh, much better. But I think the UN can also help in shaping um, a new way of considering uh, the prosperity in the world. Like, for instance, you hear very much in, in many of the circles related to business this argument that, you know, I can only take care of the social aspect once my business is flourishing. Because if I don't have money, you know, if I don't generate profits and dividends, you know, I can't do that. So I need first to generate profit, meaning whatever the way I do it, so that later on I can take care of social. That's a big mistake. Because actually, if you take care of the social component, and this is in big part the responsibility of the government, if you first invest in the social sector, then the economic sector will flourish. Let me explain to you. If you take the example of the Scandinavian countries, these countries started with um, a, a universal social system at the time they were still poor. These countries have decided we need to invest in the education of our people, in the health of our people, and do that in a universal manner, because then this will constitute the wealth 
with which we will develop. And you see that these countries today are the richest countries in the world. Of course, they are small, so their impact is not as big as big countries that we have in the world. But if you look the way they work, if you look the social indicators, if you look the economic indicators, these countries are rich. So it means that they are first invested in their people, hence the social component, and they knew that once their people were educated, healthy, you know, with a, uh, with a mind well trained, then they would be good good element to help the economic development. And that's often the mistake that countries that are least developed do, is that they think that they have to have business and so on and so forth and later on educate people. But how do you develop a country if your people are uneducated, if they are not in good health? It means that you have a workforce that is only a very basic workforce that will not contribute with its thinking, with, with its ideas to the development of the country. So I think the UN also brings challenges the more classical way of looking at, think, at, at things because we constantly bring back people to the center. And if governments actually bring back people to the center, know that the first investment they have to do is on people, then the rest somewhat will flow easily. And not only the rest, when I mean the rest, I don't refer only to economy. I refer also to stability, to peace. Because educated population are, are much likely to bring a peaceful environment. Because when you have an uneducated population, of course, they are in such a dire situation that they are vulnerable. They are also vulnerable to propaganda of some extremist groups and so on and so forth. So education reduces violence among people. And not only the violence, as I referred earlier on, uh, for instance, terrorism, also violence within the family. Education and the, the welfare of people actually brings many, many goods in a society. So I think the UN also plays that role to challenge a little bit um, a rezoning that is very short-sighted. I need to have money to be able uh, to later on, I'll see when I'm rich if I can do that wrong. And that's why the idea of social business, the idea of the SDGs, the idea of thinking differently economy is important and this is where the UN play a big role. I think, you know, my call to the businesses would be embrace the SDGs because they will bring good to you and they will bring good to the people of the country. So it's a win, 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 win situation. Everybody wins. The government, the businesses and the people. So after all, who would be that foolish not to embrace that? <laughs>